3.23 Affliction brought a ton of new transfigured gems into the scene, and not all of them were created equal. Some of them were way too strong. Some of them were absolutely trash. However, there are some that went under the radar. Today, I'm going to bring you one of those gems that I believe can redefine the meta in 3.24. Let's get into it. That gem is Blade Blast of Dagger Detonation. Blade Blast of Dagger Detonation provides a base amount of physical damage and then gives you an added physical damage based on how much flat damage your dagger has. Most importantly, you don't need blades on the ground from something like Ethereal Knives or Blade Vortex in order to do your damage. The skill does damage on its own, it just takes damage from your dagger. So this spell can easily deal thousands of damage without gem level scaling. However, gem level scaling also benefits this by giving you even more flat damage from your dagger. The line we're concerned with is deals added damage equal to 600% of equipped dagger. That means if your equipped dagger has 300 flat damage on it, not including attack speed modifiers, you will get an additional 1800 flat physical damage, pushing this over 2000 flat physical, making it one of the strongest physical spell gems in the game. Physical spells are incredibly powerful, things like Ethereal Knives and Blade Vortex, because they provide the ability to scale in multiple ways. Physical damage can be turned into poison damage, it can be converted into cold, scaled with hatred, which is the most powerful offensive aura in the game, or left as physical to do things like impale. Physical spells have long been one of my favorite archetypes in PoE. When I discovered this gem, I could not wait to build around it. The base radius of the gem is 2.9 meters, which is almost on par with things like Discharge and Ice Nova, which are some of the biggest AoEs in the game. Now, I am working on a League Starter that is going to look nothing like the build that I show you today. For now, let's talk about the build that I already made. This is a Beano's Cast on Crit Perfect Agony Blade Blast of Dagger Detonation Assassin. The star of the show here is the Beano's Kitchen Knife. This is an item that is an icon of PoE, but has not been, uh, let's say, meta for a while. While being a tier zero unique puts it on the tier of Headhunter and Mageblood, the power level of this item is generally considered to be pretty low. However, in this particular build, it really shines. Because we are an assassin, we don't get the poison prolif of something like a Pathfinder or any sort of explosion like a cultist. So the line on Beano's that says, upon killing a poison enemy, nearby enemies are poisoned, gives us a great proliferation, which requires us to not cover the entire screen in our hits. This also is incredibly powerful on single targets that are surrounded by enemies, such as really tanky rares, because all those poisons that you do on the enemies nearby will prolift to the rare. On top of the fact that this weapon has 300 flat physical damage with a good roll, it also has local crit chance, global crit chance, and critical strike multiple. There's even a little bit of chaos res, but this allows us to have a dagger with nearly 10 flat critical strike chance and enables a cast on crit setup. Cast on crit with poison is generally frowned upon as its power level is considered to be low, but again, in this particular setup, it shines. It shines with Perfect Agony. Perfect Agony makes you do 30% less damage with hits. However, it makes it so your critical strike multiplier applies to your damage over time multiplier at 50% value. So if you have, say, 300% crit multi, you'll get 150 damage over time multiplier, which is a really nice number. The problem is, lowering of hits usually is not worth upside. With such easy access to critical strike chance, we don't even need that much multi to make perfect agony work. That's where Assassin comes in. Unstable Infusion gives us an extra power charge, and Deadly Infusion gives us great multipliers for power charge. We also get a ton of poison duration from Noxious Strike, as well as recovery and poison chance on hit. Toxic Delivery gives us a huge amount of critical strike chance, as well as more damage to poisons inflicted with crits. Lastly, Mistwalker is phenomenal for scaling elusive effect, which allows you to take less hits and go faster, as well as not take any damage from critical strikes, which in the Wildwood can be a big problem. We also get a maximum power charge from the Venomous Toxin's helmet. This helmet is great for power charge stacking alongside of Poison, which is again, kind of a lost archetype, but this item is incredibly powerful when used properly. This build gets 10 power charges, which means we get 70% chance to Poison, and up to 200% increased damage. The helmet also gives some flat chaos damage. We get an additional power charge from a corruption. We get even more power charges from the Malachi's Loop shield. Usually Malachi's Loop has the downside of losing all your power charges when you reach max, but we don't have that problem because we use Ralakesh's Impatience. These boots are likely to take a nerf after this league or at least be made rarer, but 
These boots enable so many wonderful things in this game right now, and we'll get into one of those in a second. So we are always at maximum power charges. We are always at maximum endurance charges, which we get an additional from the boots, implicit corruption. And lastly, we are always at maximum frenzy charges. Why does that matter? Because we are using Badge of the Brotherhood, one of my favorite items. This makes it so your frenzy charges match your total maximum power charges. We get 10 power charges, so we are now granted 10 maximum frenzy charges. This gives us attack speed for Cyclone, as well as more damage per frenzy. However, there's one important interaction that relies on the Rallakesh's impatience. That is Alessia's Delight. This says maximum affliction charges is equal to maximum frenzy charges. That means we also have 10 maximum affliction charges. You gain affliction charges instead of frenzies. Because of Rallakesh, we don't need to gain frenzies to be considered at max, which means we can benefit from both frenzy charges and affliction charges at the same time. Now, what is an affliction charge? Affliction charges grant you 8% more damage with ailments charge. We have 10, so that is 80% more damage from our belt. One final cool unique that the build makes use of is Cosprey's Will. This gives us an additional gem level for our socketed gems because we have a corruption. It gives us an additional curse, and a bunch of chaos res and evasion. We can also hex hexproof enemies, which is a really, really nice benefit in certain difficult maps. So let's jump in game and I'll go over some of the more important interactions and some of the gems we're using. To get you playing if you want to play this build. Okay, so here we have level 97 arrow actually Beano's. I don't know if it's Binos, Beano's. Somebody will correct me in the comments, I'm sure. So here we have the Pino's Kitchen Knife. Uh, grabbed a pretty good roll because it's really easy to, because no one uses this item, even though it's tier zero. However, if a bunch of people do, it will be very difficult. We talked about the Phenomous Helmet and the Malachi's Loop. So let's go over the things that we didn't talk about here. The rings, we grab a Curse on Hit uh, Despair Ring. We also put Aspect of the Spider on here for uh, Phenomous Toxins because we get some benefits from it there. A little bit of strength, a little bit of life, and some minus mana cost. Getting the minus mana cost uh, is pretty important because we are casting our Blade Blast very often. It is 43 mana, even with the minus cost. So in order to keep that down a bit, we grab some minus seven. On the other ring, we have some accuracy, chaos damage, resists, and life. Nothing too special there. The gloves, we grab chaos damage, leads his life. You want to get a high roll there because we do pretty low hit damage, and that is because of deadly ailments, which does less damage with hits, so that requires more damage in order to get to leech cap, so you want to grab the uh, the highest tier you can of, of leech. And then we have damage per frenzy because we have 10 of those. It's pretty high-end gear here. Uh, we've got hybrid life, life, uh, tier 1 spell suppress, and double tier 1 res. I needed a lot of tier 1s to get my reses capped comfortably. Uh, and our chaos res with the flask is a 70%. That's good enough for me. For a flask, we use progenesis. This is just a generically powerful item on life-based builds. Taste of hate between taste of hate and Malachi's loop. We get a decent bit of physical damage taken as because we don't have a lot of physical damage reduction. Speaking of physical damage reduction, we get an endurance charge here on the boots. That's pretty nice because we're always at max endurance charges. We get a max res on the chest, but that's just kind of bonus. That's just what was on the one that I found. Our badge of the Brotherhood has resists on it too because we really were resist starved. The build has a lot of uniques on it. We also have a Jade Flask. This gives us attack leech that applies to our Cyclone. So we're also getting Cyclone leech between our... I threw this on here thinking that maybe I would get rid of the Chaos leech from my gloves. Um, but I think between the two of them, we get up the leech cap pretty quickly because our Cyclone actually does a bit of damage. We have movement speed and movement speed as well as evasion on an Onslaught Flask. Talk about gems. We use Shield Charge with faster attacks really really quick movement anytime we're not cycloning this build likes to cyclone very briefly it casts a few uh, blade blasts and then you can zoom to the next pack uh, we use self-cast despair we are self-casting despair because we have uh, the balance of terror which inflicts wither on hit we are hitting with cyclone and with our blade blast we're also getting hits from our void sphere on our cast when damage taken we are really hitting a lot of times per second so our wither stacks are going to be maxed pretty much all the time in the helmet, we have steel skin and increased duration. It's supposed to be on my left click. It only costs one mana, which is super nice. And this is just going off all the time. Uh, the buff lasts for almost three seconds and it takes a little over two to recover from cooldown. So we end up having about 60% uptime on our steel skin, which is pretty nice. We have a void sphere on cast when damage taken that pulls enemies close together. That helps with things like pro lift, keeps enemies away from you while you're moving around. Void sphere on cast when damage taken. I put this in every build I can. It's an incredible defensive tool as well as an offensive tool to bunch enemies up to blow them up. 
We have an Arcanist brand with Temp Chains, as well as a Frostblink for instant. Frostblink is really cool while you're cycloning because it's an instant cast, so you can Frostblink and continue to cycle. Feels pretty Just nice. Just need a moment to catch my breath. In the boots, we have a Divine Blessing Malevolence setup. Anytime you're running Eldritch Battery, you should have one of these. So that's just a bunch of damage. We run a level one Vitality for our Watcher's Eye, which gives us life on enemy hit while affected by Vitality. Again, that applies to our Cyclone as well as our Blade Blast. You're getting a ton of life back. In the gloves, we have our Auras, level three Enlighten alongside of Dread Banner, Grace, and Haste. I actually don't even think I need this leveled up and that's why it's at level one, because I am a little bit I'm actually over capture the evasion, um, but I probably should level this up a bit. But lastly, in the chest, we have our Blade Blast setup. So, Blade Blast of Dagger Detonation. Uh, I was only able to get a level 20. I never was able to hit a 21. Uh, with, with levels, the base damage and the spell damage added goes up. So it's actually pretty nice to get more levels on this. We have a Power Charger crit. We don't need any extra crit chance. So, I never got quality on it. We have our Awakened Cast on Critical Strike support. This is very important to get to level 10. If you are playing a Cast on Crit build for the first time, and this is the one that you want to play, I don't recommend it. This is a pretty complex build. But basically, we wanted to get to level 10 in order to get 37% increased cooldown recovery rate to make it a lot easier for us to get to that next breakpoint. We also use a Cyclone. Cyclone, we use Awakened Deadly Ailments for more damage, as well as Void Manipulation. So let's talk about the tree and the gems. We talked about the balance of terror. We have toxic delivery because we wanted to get more than just the four nodes. These are all incredibly strong for this build, so we stole an extra one. We also have that here. Unholy Grace gives us attack speed, chaos damage, as well as unholy might on crit. We're always critting, so we always have 30% of fizz as extra chaos. This is a massive amount of damage. This Watcher's Eye gets us to evade cap, which is super nice. Not getting hit by enemies is fantastic when you stack up a little bit of block chance as well as a loose elusive effect from Mistwalker and 95% chance to avoid, you pretty much never get hit by attacks. Down here we have an unnatural instinct. This is incredibly strong in the spot because we get this evasion rating per frenzy, we get the life, we get attack speed, we get resistances, evasion, dexterity, lots of good stuff. Anytime you're playing a badge of the brotherhood build and you can reach this point or three points here, it's definitely worth an unnatural instinct. We have a that which was taken, which gives us frenzy on hit. Any additional frenzy on hit is gonna be nice. Frenzy on hit is mandatory in order to generate affliction charges. Again, we are hitting so much that we are always going to have those charges up. We have AOE per power charge, evasion per frenzy. Again, we have 10 of each of those, as well as onslaught on kill. I could drop this uh, silver flask, but I liked having it up for bosses. As far as the tree goes, we're basically just taking the generic power charge stuff. Some Fizz's Extra Chaos here, Poison Spell, Multi is really, really strong. So obviously you want to get your Critical Strike chance up really high because Assassin works with crits. Grab a bunch of life in order to try to get our life pool to a decent amount. Honestly, 3,500 feels like plenty for this build. We have uncapped uh, Spell Suppression, but it is, I think, in the 90s. Then, of course, Perfect Agony to scale our critical damage. We take the 50% more accuracy at close range with the mastery here because our cyclone is just about going to be close range. Except for the monsters that we hit, the absolute edge, the range in game of close range is just about the radius of our cyclone. So this is just 50% more accuracy. This is phenomenal and helps us get to 100% hit chance. We'll talk about the uh, charms. This is gonna be difficult to build next league as is with this setup because we get a bunch of CDR from our charm here. We have 8% cooldown recovery rate and 10% here. We grab a little bit of block, some spell suppress, area of effect, and blind. Blind helps us get to evade cap. This build was incredibly fun to play, but it also introduced me to a gem that I believe I'm going to be league starting. Stay tuned and check out the channel for more videos on this particular gem. But if you really want to know what's going on, stop by my Twitch, twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. I'm live almost every single day, and I'm currently testing Blade Blast of Dagger Detonation in League Start scenarios. Uh, come check us out on Twitch. If you like this video, give it a like, give it a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you all very much. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, take care.